Infertility is a condition that affects one in six couple. Some can be treated with drugs or surgery, while a proportion would need ART. And when you say ART, it means a treatment which involves the manipulation of eggs, the sperms and embryos outside the body. In IVF itself, it involves retrieval of the eggs from a woman's body, fertilization of the eggs and sperm in lab, and subsequently embryo transfer. Uh, since the birth of the first IVF baby, Louis Brown, in 1978, we have witnessed tremendous development of ART service. The HC technique, the development of new and optimum stimulation protocol, vitrification of embryos and oocytes, PGD and PGS, and many, many others which definitely would give a great impact towards achieving our patient's desire, none other than to be a parent. Non-pregnant women of reproductive age typically have menstrual cycles that last approximately one month. Every month, an ovarian follicle containing an ovum, an egg, grows under the influence of the body's hormones. At the midpoint of the cycle, ovulation occurs which is also regulated by hormones. The ovum, which is ready to be fertilized from this point on, is taken up by the fimbrae of the fallopian tubes, which act as conduits to the uterus, where it awaits the arrival of viable sperm. The desire to have children is a natural human instinct, but it cannot be always fulfilled. The causes of unwanted childlessness are numerous, as are the options for treating them. With intrauterine insemination, the timing of sperm delivery is tightly controlled using the sperm sample provided by the male partner at the time of ovulation, or by using a previously frozen sample. In the laboratory, the ejaculate is often passed through our special filter system in the conical tube, slowly centrifuged, and then washed. Only active sperm cells are collected in this way. Other parts of the ejaculate are discarded. Using a syringe and a thin catheter, the prepared sperm cells are directly introduced into the cavity of the uterus or womb, beyond the cervix, the mouth of the womb. Once deposited there, the sperm immediately make their own way towards the awaiting egg in the fallopian tube. The objective here is to minimize the distance to the egg awaiting fertilization for as many fit sperm cells as possible. As a result of the earlier preparation, the sperm cells are more motile, and the heads of the spermatozoa have undergone their maturational process that prepares them for fertilization. A further development of in vitro fertilization is what is known as intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ITC for short. The ovaries are first stimulated with hormones to allow several ovarian follicles to mature. The eggs are then removed by aspiration. This takes place under sedation during a short outpatient procedure. Fertilization takes place by injecting an individual sperm cell into one or more of the collected eggs. For this purpose, the egg is held in a holding pipette and one sperm cell is injected under the microscope directly into the ovum by means of a very fine pipette. After about 24 hours, the eggs are checked for signs of fertilization. After a further 24 hours, the embryo, undergoing cell division all the while, can be transferred to the cavity of the uterus by means of a thin catheter, and left to embed itself into the uterine mucosa, just as in natural pregnancy. definitely would need a little help and we are happy as fertility specialists to be part of the helping hand. Now the first IVF baby in Malaysia was born in 1987 and since then Malaysia has seen a growth of IVF services. Uh, up to date we have 35 IVF centres in Malaysia with four being a government sector and 31 private sectors. The number of IVF cycles also uh, show an uh, increment annually and in year 2014, which is last year, we have done about 4,500 IVF cycles.